Hi everyone and welcome back to a brand new piercing video. Yes, okay, so in this video, I am going to be teaching you all about aftercare when you've just got a brand new piercing, how to make it heal quickly, how to like make sure it doesn't get infected, all that good kind of stuff. It was heavily requested. I did a poll on Twitter and the top, the winner was aftercare. So it won just by a smidgen. So my next video will be answering your specific questions. So for this video, I am going to be pretending that my nostril piercing here is a brand new piercing. Obviously I've had it for quite a long time now, but just for this video, I'm going to be saying that this one is a new piercing and this is the one that I'm going to be working with. <laughs> you've just got a brand new piercing and you've just got home and you're like, oh my gosh, new piercing. How exciting. This is really, really like exciting. I know after when I get brand new piercings, I'm so, like, I come home and I'm on such a high. I'm like, yes, taking loads of photos. Like, oh my God, look, 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 First things first. Now I just want to go over some of the more basic stuff. Do not touch it. I know that it's so tempting to get a new piercing, like to play with it, to be like, oh, look, it's so cool. I love it so much. It's so like amazing and stuff. Like just leave it alone. Like seriously, the more you touch it, the more you play with it, like the less likely it is going to heal properly. Also, you've got so much bacteria in your hands that all of that is going into your piercing and can cause you to have an infection. So just leave it alone. Also, when you do come to actually cleaning your piercing, make sure you wash your hands. Wash your hands thoroughly, 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 because again, your hands carry so much bacteria that you don't realize, and that is all gonna be going into your piercing. Also, do not twist them. Now, a lot of things, like I've heard people say, oh, you should twist your piercing, make sure it doesn't seal up. What's happening is the inside of your piercing is obviously trying to heal. And so it's healing around the outside of the holes and stuff. But when you're twisting it and you're pulling it, you're just ripping those things off and ripping the little scabs and the little inside. Like your body naturally makes like, like uh, crusty stuff around the outside of your piercing, which is obviously trying to protect it so it can heal. But you're like ripping all this stuff off when you're twisting it and things. And it's causing it not to heal very well. This is always why I do say, do not get piercings with like hoops and things because it's more prone to twisting and going in and out. When you have flat barbells, the ones that like labret ones that are like flat on one side and like a ball on the other, it's so much easier just to leave them alone and not have them twist. But when you have a hoop, they wiggle about a bit, especially if they're on your ear and they're sticking it on the side, you're more likely to catch it, which is gonna cause it to twist, make it bleed, but you don't want that happening to you, do you darling? No, trot along bitch. After you get piercings, it is very common for your piercing to swell or like the area around it to swell, which is why a lot of the times the people will pierce them with quite long, like long bars, because because obviously if it does swell, there's enough bar there to accommodate it so your nose or whatever your place you're getting pierced doesn't swell over the piercing, which I've had done before, which isn't very friendly. <laughs> Not very nice at all. Ibuprofen's really good to take if you do have swelling. It does help to reduce swelling. Obviously make sure that you can take it. Don't just take it without like consoling doctors and things. Make sure that you are <laughs> not allergic to anything. But ibuprofen is one of the things that they do tell you to take after getting piercings because it does help with swelling. So when you get a new piercing, you should be cleaning it twice a day. First thing in the morning and the last thing at night, make sure that you do do it. So there are a few ways that you can clean your piercings. First of all, uh, the method that I generally use is salt water. Get like a kettle, boil some water in a kettle and pour it into a cup. And you only need to maybe like this much, like this is the cup that I'm using, but there's only like this much water inside the cup. You want to put like a few pinches of rock salt in the bottom of your cup. Try to use rock salt rather than things like table salt, like rock salt's better for you. So what you next need is cotton buds, cotton swabs, uh, Q-tips, whatever you have. Um, I have like a thing here, not sponsored. <laughs> and also you want to make sure that the are covered. Obviously, I've just taken my lid off, but um, a lot of people make the, like, the mistake of just leaving them on the side or leaving them in like a drawer or something. And a lot of dust can get into the cotton swabs. And then if you're putting that into your ear, you're putting that dust and that dirt into your piercing. So make sure that the cotton swabs are nicely covered. So what we want to do next is obviously with the salt water that's in this cup and the Q-tip, make sure that you just dip it in. Make sure that it's not too hot still. Don't obviously put anything that's gonna be hurting you and burning your skin. So what you do now is just wipe round each side of the piercing. So go either side of it and just do like a little twisty motions sort of like rolling it through your fingers, um, either side, making sure that you're getting any like the crusty stuff off of it or scabs or like any blood bits. Because a lot of the time after you do get a piercing, it will bleed like on its own sometimes. So make sure that any sort of like blood is away from it. Obviously go on the inside as well and inside of the piercing. This can obviously feel quite bizarre. Obviously mine's coming out clean because it's a healed piercing. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing really there that needs to be done. And making sure that it's all clean and the inside and the outside of the hole isn't bleeding anymore and there's like no crusty stuff around it. And that's all you have to do. That's literally just done. Just get some tissue or some like anything like that and just dab it dry. Um, you don't have to do this all the time. It depends on what you're doing. But the only thing is if you're using salt water or salt rock, if you don't dry it, the salt kind of crystallizes on your surface and you look, again, you look like you've got sort of like skin dandruff and you don't really want that. So just maybe just let, make sure that it's dry um, on either side. 
and that's literally all you have to do. It's so, so, so easy to keep it clean. If your piercing is a little bit swollen or there's like, it's giving you a little bit more grief than normal, I use tissue or you can use like cotton wool. So all you want to do in this scenario, you wanna just submerge the, the tissue into the liquid. So the salt water that you've got here, submerge it in there and then just hold it over the front of the piercing. And if you can re get the inside as well, hold it on the inside as well. And you just wanna hold it there like this for like, a minute or so and this will obviously just get the salt water really inside the piercing and make sure that the piercing is clean and like it's a lot easier to do certain piercings like this like nipple piercings a lot of people use shot glasses and they put a little bit of salt water in the shot glass and then hold it over the piercing so that like the nipple piercing is kind of like submerged in the salt water if you have surface piercings as well i prefer using the soaking method method with surface piercings just because of where it is a lot of them are easier to do with just holding a bit of like damp cotton wool or damp tissue over the like the piercing area so another way you can clean your piercings which is uh when so basically when i first get piercings i use salt water because obviously it's a fresh piercing so i really want to make sure that it is clean now when the piercing like after a month i generally change to saline solution now i didn't even know that you could use this until up to like just over a year and a half ago because my piercer when i moved to london told me this and i was just like what you can use saline solution and as someone who's addicted to contact lenses <laughs> I was like, I am like inundated with saline solutions. So it's so perfect. What I do is I just put my, like the Q-tip on the, like the very top where the hole is. Just turn it over like this, squeeze it back into it. Just so some of the solution obviously goes into the cotton swab. And now, oh, now it's dripping. So I put too much on it. And again, just go through the piercing around the front and the back and just make sure that it's all clean. I have a piece of tissue on my lip here. Oh God. Now one question that I do get all the time, all the time is how do I make my piercings heal fast. I don't want this kind of jewelry, how to put like a new jewelry in fast, how to do all this kind of stuff. And unfortunately there is no answer for this like situation. You just have to go with how your body is accepting the piercing. Piercers will say for cartilage piercings about six months before you can change bars and change jewelry. I've obviously done it before then, but I'm not gonna advise you to do it. I'd be lying if I was to say I've waited six months for every single one before I've changed them. But that's because I know how my body reacts. I've been getting piercings now for 10 years. I know how my body copes with different things. So I know when I'm okay to change piercings. If you're new to piercings, go by what they tell you and don't just change something because you don't like the jewelry or just because you, know, you want something else. If you're gonna enter this world and you're gonna enter this world of body modification, you wanna do all this kind of stuff, you can't just do whatever you want. Like you have to go with the rules and actually say like, you know, let your piercing heal before you change your bar, you know, do clean every single day don't just be like oh it'll be fine it'll be fine it'll be fine because that's the attitude that i had when i first had piercings and that's why my bottom like industrial piercing i had a long time ago went septic and my ear went really weird and gross for me personally after about two months i just wash my piercing in the shower i don't do any like the salt water stuff unless the piercing is still being annoying i just wash it in the shower like when i have a shower in the morning also i want to say as well don't clean them too much and i know this seems a bit stupid but like twice a day is enough you don't need to go like if it's like bleeding or something or there's some crusty stuff around it just leave it until the time that you are going to clean it if you clean it too much you can destroy your natural back like your natural kind of like bacteria skin healing stuff i don't know what the correct terminology is <laughs> now i want to say as well that your body piercer when you do go to your studio should tell you this information they should, like legally i think they're meant to legally legally say this information to you make sure you do research about where you're getting pierced and like who's doing it for you just so you know that you're going to a good like you know reputative reputative repu reputative place Good person with good reputation. <laughs> do not use piercing guns. I don't know how many times I had to tell people this. Do not use piercing guns at all. I don't care if it's an earlobe. Go to a studio. Earlobes obviously aren't as bad if you're getting like, if you're getting a cartilage like pierced with a gun, that's gonna shatter your cartilage. And I'm not surprised if a piercing never heals. Also, if your piercing is got to a stage where you can change the bar, you can change the jewelry. Wow, it's getting very bright. If you can change the jewelry, that's great. I would also advise putting uh, your new jewelry. Say you bought, bought something off eBay. A lot of the times I buy my stuff off eBay and I'll get it in like packages. And although it is new jewelry, I still do soak it in salt water prior to putting it in my body. So I'll get the bar, I'll put it into a cup, put some salt at the bottom and then put some boiling water on top of it and leave it there for maybe like 20 minutes, whatever. Just make sure that I've rubbed it down and things to make sure that any dirt that could potentially be on it kind of would be destroyed. Yeah, so if there's any more questions regarding piercings, aftercare, all that kind of stuff, please leave in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and potentially make like, that is my next piercing video. And I hope this video has been somewhat educational to you and helped you sort of understand a little bit things about um, piercings and stuff, and yeah. A massive shout out to Kelly and Stephanie for being my top two patrons. I love you all so much. So please, if you wanna become a patron and help me do this obviously full time and help me out, there's a link at the Patreon in my description. Make sure you come follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all those links as well down below. I love you all so much and I'll speak to very soon. Bye!